Hey you all and good evening. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from my home. I uh, a rare occasion I'm actually at the house. It has been uh, we moved. We moved in November, the big move. Um, but just as soon as we could get moved in, as soon as we get all our stuff here, me and Jen got all our stuff here, we uh, set out on a road trip. We went out to Branson, um, visited Silver Dollar City, hung out with Boogie and Desi um, while we were out there, and then we had to go um, visit my family for Christmas. So December, even though we had officially been moved in, was an absolute whirlwind. And um, January, I took the first week off in January for a variety of reasons. Um, Part of it being just YouTube is very slow at that time as far as monetization. Just speaking honestly here, monetization. So I figure if I'm going to take a week off, it might as well be when YouTube is kind of in its dippiest dip. So uh, in uh, January, I took the first week off, but then hit the road with a head full of steam. And things may not have gone exactly as planned. We did the Choose My Adventure road trip. We had some we had some good fun, but uh, from that point, the the snow, the winter weather, old man winter, <laughs> peeked out his head and, and and covered our entire nation in cold, sleet, slush, snow, and other horrible types of weather, kind of pushing me physically, pushing me down to Florida. I had no choice. I had no choice but to go to Florida because everywhere else in the country was closing in around me and I had, the, I had no choice but to go to Florida. And then I decided, we did the, the big Punxsutawney Phil uh, visit, went up and did Groundhog Day, left Florida, spent about two days here. I think in all in all, I spent about two nights in my own bed and was immediately headed back up to uh, to meet Punxsutawney Phil in, uh, in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Had a great time, great time. Um, doing the Groundhog thing. I don't know if I'll ever go back to Gobbler's Knob to do Groundhog Day again. Maybe, maybe some year. But I thought about checking out some of the other Groundhog celebrations around the country. I think that might be an interesting project. Every Groundhog Day, do a different, I don't know if this is realistic or not, do a different uh, Groundhog celebration every Groundhog Day. We'll see. This is something to keep in the back of my head. You know, not a, not a, I'm not committing to it right now. But uh, from there, went back down to Florida. I just kind of just felt um, you know, again, the weather, this time of year, just everything is closed in a lot of states. It's harder to find stuff to do, but there was a lot going on in Florida. Wanted to do the Mardi Gras celebration at the theme parks. Wanted to get my fill of the theme parks. So February is a good time. Good time to get your fill of the theme parks. Um, because, uh, you know, it, it pretty soon it's going to be so hot in Florida that no one wants to be there. Well, people still want to be there. I get a little uh, get a little uh, sick of the heat once it picks up there. So uh, I'm I'm planning on I finally made it back home. And and guys, I'm I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm still trying to figure out a balance between home and the road. I love the road. I also love my home. And I love Jen. And I love spending time with Jen here at the house. And she's been work she's hard at work while I was gone. Um, still getting unpacked. We're not finished. We're not finished unpacking. Uh, me and Jen. I'll be honest with you. Me and Jen have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff. You know, she has her collections. I have my collections. And we're in the process of merging those collections still. But uh, I wonder maybe you guys kind of just an update on me, my house, kind of what's going on. Maybe uh, touch on some some future plans here. So uh, I'm just going to take you guys through the house and uh, just show you what what's happening here. At uh, I don't know. What do we call? What do I call the house now? Leave a comment in the comment section. What what should I refer to my home base? I used to just call it the bunker where we currently are standing. But I don't just live in the bunker now. I live in the whole house. So, uh, and, and, and you'll see as I take you through the house that some of this madness down here in the bunker is expanding into the rest of the house. I'll show you that here in, uh, in just a moment. But I did want to show you guys a few things down here in the bunker that I've uh, that I've changed before we head upstairs. Of course, Joe Dirt always uh, under the watchful eye of Joe Dirt down here, and Clark. Clark's been just hanging out with his friends down here after our uh, our long road trip. I actually want to watch the never-ending uh, 
never ending story again. I think me and Jenner will watch that either tonight or maybe in the upcoming days. Cause I, it, it brought, even though he looks nothing like Falcor, it, it brought back some memories that I really want to revisit. Uh, never ending story. I also got the baby here. We did watch this. We did watch this last night. I showed Jen Eraserhead. And man, if you've never seen Eraserhead, you need to make a decision if you want to, uh, if you want to <laughs> see it or not. It, it, sometimes I think it may be better to live your life never seen, never having seen Eraserhead. Um, I think Jen was a little, <laughs> a little troubled. And uh, my biggest question: Why the 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 gentleman? Um, I think it's Henry is his, is his name, the main character. He keeps he keeps his change. He opens the, he opens his door, the drawer in his bedroom, and he puts all his change into a dish full of water. And I was like, what, what, what's happening here? Why would he do that? But then you know, of course, the movie spirals, and and this is his child, and they don't explain why his baby looks like this. So. Baby from Racerhead here. I don't know if we got uh, a good spot for 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 him yet. <laughs> we will. Uh, oh, sorry, Jamie, to bump bump the baby. Just hope it doesn't start crying. That would be that would be horrible. There. But these guys just noticed these these comics. These are rare. The uh, Captain Citrus comics from the Florida Welcome Center. I, mean, I need to bring these upstairs because I wanted uh, Jen wanted to Jen wanted to read these. Now I just put this together today. I felt like there was just too much open space here in the middle of the bunker. I, you know, moved stuff around. It used to come out more. And it just seems like there was such a big area here. I wanted something that I could display in the center of the room. And I, this is what I found on, on Amazon. I don't know. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's, as you guys, I'm going to keep it. It's good. But I don't know if it's exactly what I want. I'd like something maybe a little taller as a display case. But this is actually a terrarium. It's supposed to be a terrarium. You're supposed to put like rocks and plants inside here, so you have them in your table. But I just wanted to display things that maybe looked better, like from from the top down. So I put some of my masks in there. I love these uh, vintage Halloween masks. Jen bought this for me because <laughs> she knew I'd love it. And then this is uh, a promo mask. That's Henry Zabrowski from uh, Your Pretty Face Is Going to Hell, made by my friend uh, Shane Morton, who's the uh, the uh, artistic director on that show and I put my uh, my Bigfoot foot in there that's the Patterson Gimlin uh, foot cast there and also let me show you guys this Just, you know I figured I'd have like some stuff you could display on uh, on in the thing and maybe put some things on top on display here you can see there actually is little air holes here if you were to make it a terrarium and the only thing I don't like about this is like when you jiggle it it makes a ton of noise for some reason. So I'm not sure about that, but I've been I've been I've been, I've been sharing with you guys very uh, for a very long time the pains of the smashed penny. You know, I get the smashed pennies about 75% of the time. They don't make it all the way home. So other day I was at uh, me and Adam went to went to Hollywood Studios. We went to Epcot, and he was collecting some Disney pennies and he had bought a uh, a penny album so i figured that was a good idea i bought my own penny album and i've actually put these pennies in here some of the pennies i've collected over the years some of these are just from individual attractions i don't know you know some of them are hard to read because the pennies were dirty but there's like the uh big texan steakhouse where i ate the 72 ounce steak the volo auto museum that's got a um a batmobile on it, um, there's there's the my smashed penny. I used to I used to sell those. Um, I'm not able to been not able to get any more from uh, from my hookup. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of just a lot of good memories here, like the merry-go-round museum. Although I don't remember which merry-go-round museum that. Okay, it's merry-go-round museum. So that's the one in uh, in Sandusky, Ohio. Because other one's called the Carousel Museum in in New York. There's the Leap the Dips, the world's oldest uh, oldest roller coaster, and I'm glad I got this because they're actually not running the rides there at Lakemont Park this year, which makes me very nervous. Makes me nervous that they're going to shut down uh, the world's oldest roller coaster. Yeah, you see, some of them are so. This is from the uh, from the World of Citrus, I think, in Florida, but the, the penny was so gunky you can't read it. You can't read it very well. 
I've got some Disney ones in here. Got all the country bears. I got a bunch of Splash Mountain ones. I think I must have gotten a lot of duplicates because they have the cool, uh, they had the cool machine where the pennies actually went down the mountain. So yeah, this will be a better way to, to keep track of the pennies. Also, I get apparently I get them a lot at Ripley's because Ripley's does have the fun, um, the fun penny smashers where it actually is Robert Ripley. And I, I, when I got this recent one, I was like, I don't think I have a Gurning Man. I already had two Gurning Man, so it's 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 hard to. Uh, Hard to keep track. I really like these ones at the top. I don't know if you can see, but they actually show the buildings, the exteriors of the buildings. So I like those. Those are probably probably my favorite. And then I found some. I think these were a gift. I think someone gave these to me because I don't remember going to these uh, these places. These are some. I, don't, I remember going to some of these places, but I don't remember getting these pennies. There are some from uh, Islands of Adventure, and then the Seneca. Seneca Zoo alligator there in uh, near Rochester. So I don't know if that was Jen's, if she gave that to me, or if someone else had uh, had given that to me or sent that to me in the past. Also, I, ha I hung on to some other coins here. This is the doubloon I had to beg for at um, at Gasparilla, that shiny pirate doubloon, and uh, this was given to me by a member of the inner circle. The uh, Punxsutawney Groundhog uh, Society, and this is a token. I, don't know, I started to collecting like individual tokens. This is from Skyline Tower. Oh, so I go out of focus so easy. It's from Skyline Skyline Tower in uh, in Niagara Falls. It's just like such an old school token. I wanted to hang on to. I started to develop like a little collection of uh, of like game tokens from different places. You can see uh, some of these. Other tokens that I've collected over the years. This is the Yield Curiosity Shop in Seattle. These are some tokens that work on the machines at uh, House on the Rock. Got some tokens there, some tickets from uh, Billy Bob's Wonderland out in uh, West Virginia. This is Funland or Hobbit Beach tickets. And a stack of tickets for Knobles. And these never go bad, so I need to hang on to these. I also just put together uh, these shelves here. I thought these were the same as this shelf but it's actually way bigger. Um, so I'm gonna have to move some of these around. Some of these stickers they have on the wall are partially covered up now, so I may have to try to move them. I don't know if there's any way to save them once they've been stuck to the wall like that. So I don't know, I'm gonna maybe just wanted some more area to put stuff. Um, I got my extra Moldoramas back there, down there. I don't know if I'm gonna use this to display uh, more Moldoramas or maybe just uh, keep this open, because as you see, my Moldorama collection is, getting uh getting very full here oh yeah and i did want to mention that uh, i have restocked some of the uh some of the pins in the pin shop that have been out for a while people have been asking me to bring uh, these three back so i've got them ordered got them uh back up in the shop so if you're interested in that you can head over uh to the etsy shop so i wanted to give an equipment update as well um this is my canon g7x this is the camera that fell out of my pocket while I was riding a roller coaster at the Florida State Fair. Um, I was trying to be safe. I had my GoPro attached to my arm. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's not, not go I call it a GoPro, but it's actually a DJI Osmo action cam. It's just, everyone calls sports cameras GoPros. Like people call all tissues Kleenexes. That's, it, I had to do that on accident. It was, I had my action cam strapped uh, to my wrist because I thought it would be safer than having this in my hand. Little did I know that I had it was gonna slide right out of my pocket and plummet down on uh, on the roller coaster. You can see I don't know if you can see really closely. You can see a little bit of yellow right there from the yellow Wild Mouse roller coaster <laughs> that we were riding. And believe it or not, it actually worked. Um, afterwards, you can see it doesn't. This is supposed to go straight up, so you can use it in selfie mode. But this is bent. Because there's a little crack in the camera right there where it's coming apart. And it's bent. It doesn't fold right. Um, so it's difficult for me to use. Um, so I, I did have two other G7Xs that I previously retired. Um, I kept, kept those in my backpack. So I was able to switch uh, once, once uh, I left the fair. I didn't have them with me at the fair, but I was able to switch. Um, again, this is, this is one of the best... Um, 
cameras for what I do that I've been able to find. Um, it has really good low light, the Canon G7X Mach 2 has really good low light. I mainly stick to this because when I film dark rides, it's good on that. When I go through haunted houses, it's good for that. Um, so that's kind of why I've stuck with this camera. Otherwise, I probably would have reverted to using some form of phone to film, but because of those things, because I do film a lot of haunts, and I do film a lot of dark rides, I, I like having this, and I like using the same camera, not having to switch around. Um, so I switched back to one that I previously retired, and let me, tell me, be honest with me. If you didn't notice, it's fine. If you did notice, be honest with me. Do you notice any difference? Because uh, this camera was giving me a little problem that wasn't quite great with, with, uh, with this camera. There's some, some issues. I'm not going to say what those issues are, but uh, leave a comment in the comment section if you notice anything different about the videos since, um, since the Florida State Fair. So I can get an honest opinion on if, um, if you guys have noticed any difference from me switching back or if it's just me being overly persnickety. But, um, one thing though, I went to buy a new, a fresh, brand new G7X and it's hard to find. These are not readily available anymore. Um, I buy, I think I estimated, I buy at least one of these a year, probably not two a year, but maybe 1.5 of these a year. It's probably the average rate of purchase because as good as they are, they are a little fragile. Um, they are um, susceptible to getting a lot of dust inside of them. There's no real way to clean it or to get the dust out. So the dust starts to show. And actually this one I was already looking towards um, getting replaced because it was getting a lot of dust. Especially if you're filming in the sun, it shows the dust. I'm not, a, I'm not really an equipment guy. I don't know a lot about cameras. I like to find something that works and stick with it. So I was looking to replace this with a new camera and I cannot find the same camera. They're on back order everywhere. Um, I put an order in for back order, but it's not supposed to be in until April, uh, sometime in April. That's still vague. I don't know if it's actually going to come. Um, the prices on, you can get them on Amazon or eBay, but the prices are really inflated, probably over $300 uh, more than what I'm used to used to paying for it. So I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think I'm going to be able to find one eventually or get one on back order. But I'm starting to wonder, do I need to switch cameras? If, if this is not going to be um, long for this world, if they are truly disc... And I don't know if they're discontinuing it or not. But if they are discontinuing this camera, um, I'm going to need to come up... Because this camera, they don't last forever, like I said. I get less than a year's worth out of these. Just because I film almost every day and this camera... And it's, you know, it's commercial grade, it's a consumer grade camera. It's not meant to be used every day. So, um, anyone have any recommendations? If I were to switch, I want something with the strongest low light as possible. Uh, my problems with this, the things that I'd like to do better is, this is bad to go out of focus. Um, the sound is good, but not great. You can't, you actually cannot put an external mic in this thing for some reason. There's no mic port. Um, so if anyone has any recommendations on a better camera or a better setup, I'm, I'm willing to hear that. I'm always willing to get feedback. And because I'm not really a tech guy, I'm not really an equipment guy, I would like some honest opinions on uh, where I should move forward as far as what I film with. So we'll go up the stairway here and I will show you guys uh, some of the other changes in the house. This is a map of the Land of Oz in uh, Beach Mountain there. And this is kind of like the Disney ride hallway. I've got some of my favorite uh, Disney attractions in frames here as we're coming up. You can see I have the Country Bear Jamboree hanging there in my hallway. Space Mountain there. The Sunshine Terrace. Home of the Orange Bird, we can get a, get a Dole Whip there. We got Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, Jungle Cruise. Of course, Small World, a classic dark ride there. And uh, Monorail. Snow White's Adventures, that's not even there anymore. It used to be uh, Snow White's Scary Adventures, now it's, now, it's, now it's gone. Well, they still have the version 
in uh, in Disneyland. I think that's it's got a different name now. And of course, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. So let's take a look at the rest of the house. Got the living room here, the uh, kitchen, kitchen back here. These are new. We just got these uh, these bar stools. Um, before previously in this house, we've never had these. This was always meant to have bar stools here, but we never had uh, bar stools. It's pretty convenient. Um, you know, just being able to sit there and eat in the kitchen. Got some, uh, got some of our uh, magnets up on the fridge. Here are different places we go. Magnet, you know, me and Jen both love like souvenirs. <laughs> this is kind of a, a shared love. So, you know, we got magnets from some of the different places we went. The La Brea Tar Pits, the Atlanta Zoo. We went to see the penguins before they left back to China. This Fisherman Wharf uh, magnet that we got uh, the day the window of my car got smashed in. Good, <laughs> good memories. <laughs> the uh, uh, Abita, Abita Springs Mystery House. I took uh, took Jen there the last time we were in, in uh, New Orleans. Fort Worth Stockyards, where me and Jen saw our first rodeo. Yeah, so this will probably, our collection of uh, different magnets will probably grow as, uh, as we go on more adventures together. Now here's something that uh, both me and Jen went a while without having, a dining room table. <laughs> you can see, I uh, bought this at a local furniture store. Um, you know, didn't go any, didn't go wacky, didn't get a crazy table. <laughs> Some things in the house are normal. Got a nice, uh, a nice, uh, nice solid wood dining room table. And we can dine as we are looked over by uh, Marshall, the uh, Marsh Monster here. Why aren't you moving, Marshall? There we go. Here we go. He adds, he adds to the ambiance when he's, uh, when he's glowing there. <laughs> We got uh, a little couch in here um, for the cats can play in the corner there, even though they never ever actually do. And um, also got the scrambler, scrambler set up here in uh, in the dining room, right there. This is my uh, my skunk. I bought this at the Lakeland Antique Mall a few years ago. It is a uh, fiberglass skunk from an amusement park in Illinois. Um, I, I just had to have what I saw it, and uh, but of course the scrambler that I got from uh, from Kirby Farms there. Uh, I, we, we, you know I may at some point get this cleaned up and turn it into an actual piece of human furniture, but right now we have uh, have uh, our, our, our mixed collection of uh, plushes in here. If you can see some that uh, you may have recognized from the travels, but this here. This was my Christmas present from Jen, one of my greatest Christmas presents that I ever received, um, the My Pet Monster. This is a genuine, authentic My Pet Monster from the 80s. I had one when I was a kid, one of my most beloved presents. My dad got me my original one. Um, my original one, I don't know what happened to it. Um, you know, sometimes my mom has a tendency to... Uh, to uh, my mom is a minimalist, a proud minimalist, and then she does not like to hang on to a bunch of uh, old things. But I'm very happy that uh, that Jen found me a uh, a new one there. It, it touched my heart when I got this on uh, on Christmas. And then we did, we mostly just stuck like unique and maybe a little different uh, plushies in here. Jen has a massive collection of plushies, so we kind of went through it. Mixed in some of mine and some of the more unusual ones in here. This is uh, King Waldorf. He is the mascot of uh, Marineland in um, in uh, Niagara Falls, one of the strangest amusement parks on the planet. Got a stuffed hodag there. There's a groundhog. Got the squonk. Miss Otterness from Otherworld. Me and Jen got this at the Toy District in uh, Los Angeles where they they ship in all the uh, all the toys and then sell them in shops near Skid Row um, and then you see the toys that come through the toy district often pop up you know at uh, at you know less expensive toy stores 
at uh, carnivals, you know, giving away as prizes. And we got this chainsaw dog. I didn't know this was a real character. Apparently it's an anime character, but I just fell in love with this dog that was half chainsaw. Apparently it's from a, from an actual show, but I didn't know that at the time. This, I got this for Jen. This is the, um, oh, I can't remember his name. Can't remember his name, but he is the mascot of Circus Circus. Of course, this sad little squonk there made by Cryptid Comforts. And uh, the actual Meow Wolf from Meow Wolf. We've got a, uh, a Mogwai Furby there. There's Reggie from the Mascot Hall of Fame. There's a lot of Buckies in here. I've uh, gotten Jen quite a few Buckies. This is the Texas Bucky. I think his back of his shirt says, yeah, he says, don't mess with Texas on the back. He's an actual Bucky from Texas. Yeah, one thing me and Jen bond over is we both have a fondness for strange mascots. So <laughs> you find a lot of like strange and unusual mascots in the house like this is jackie lopez she is the mascot for the meteor crater at, uh, roadside attraction out in uh arizona there's another hodag there uh, this is the daikon man from meow wolf the radish man at krampus there this is the samuel adams groundhog i got at uh, groundhog's day in punxsutawney and jen jen got this for me the uh it's a, was that from the Hershey's World, uh, the uh, Chocolate World in Hershey's? A little bear with the uh, Hershey's kiss on his head. She liked it because she <laughs> thought it looked like a, uh, a tinfoil hat. So, yeah, all together going on a big scrambler ride. And uh, there's Jen's uh, Triceratops uh, footstool. And there's Mothman and Flatwoods Monster there. Braxy and the Mothman in squishable form. And up here, the only thing hanging on the wall, the uh, the poster there for Slash Squatch, the hair metal Sasquatch, uh, that plays at the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot <laughs> Festival. And as you can see, a lot of a uh, lot of empty room on the walls here, and that's one of Jen's uh, current projects as we're getting uh, getting stuff framed and ready to be hung on the wall. You see a lot of open wall space throughout the house. You can see there just a lot of a lot of empty room. On which to hang stuff. So be, that'll probably be going up uh, pretty soon. And back into the living room here. How are you doing, Cammy? I don't know where Scarlet is. Scarlet's probably hiding. Her and Cammy don't get along. They fight. It's just an ongoing battle of them sneaking up on each other all day. Every once in a while, they'll uh, give each other a kiss on the nose. But other than that, it's just a pure battle all the time but uh got the fish got the fish up there i was just i just had to clean some algae off the day there's a little bit of algae like growing on some of the stuff there so i put some chemical in there that's supposed to get rid of the algae have a few little catfish in there that uh that eat the algae but yeah just you know a few community fish nothing too crazy you know it's mostly got fish that are uh, relatively easy to uh, to care for we got a guppy there a couple of couple of tetras it's kind of yeah I, I like it up here rather than the bunker so everyone can uh can enjoy the fish and then just look at all this fun stuff this is the the space demon i remember i posted a photo of myself as a kid holding this and uh it, when i was showing off my family albums and uh, you guys told me what it was. It was a space demon. I forget the, the toy line, but I was able to look it up on eBay and, uh, and replace it. And um, this broke during moving. Jen, uh, Jen didn't break it, but it was packed in a box and it broke. Um, and Jen ordered a new one. This is the uh, cocaine bear from uh, Kentucky for Kentucky. With some actual snow in there. <laughs> there is a couple miniature versions of me. I got from uh, Little Canada, and if you go to Little, remember if you go to Little Canada, and tell them the carpet bagger sent you. But if you go to Little Canada, you can find that little version of me standing in front of Ripley's in uh, Niagara Falls. I had to put that. I had to put that right on the edge and move that, move that back there. We both uh, both have a, have, a, have a love of snow globes. I actually, got a stack in the bedroom, but. Uh, I'm not going to film the bedroom today, but uh, 
Yeah, both love the, the snow globes. Jen got both these to me as gifts. That was the Mothman for Valentine's Day. And then she got me this uh, Sasquatch holding a bunch of cats, because I love both cats and Sasquatch. These are the, I think, furry bones. We have the cryptid birds, the Yeti, the uh, Jackalope, and Krampus there. Some other fun stuff. Yeah, this was a, a fun uh, a fun present Jen got me. This is a uh, a bobblehead that says happy birthday. It's from Circus Circus. And we have no idea who this is supposed to be. This clown in a suit. <laughs> so, and uh, this they here. I purchased this at the Neon uh, the Neon Boneyard. This is an actual light that was uh, in the Las Vegas sign. I thought that was kind of a cool uh, Vegas souvenir. Some more of our uh, snow globes down there. Yeah, these, um, these shelves are slowly filling up as Jen goes through the boxes and unpacks, slowly getting stuff onto the shelves. So yeah, we have a lot of room still here to, uh, to fill up, but I believe it will be filled up once she, uh, when she goes through everything. You can see my, uh, my, my Yeti turtle there. Jen, Jen fell in love with it, so uh, put it upstairs so we can all enjoy it. Jen got me this, uh, this jackalope here, this full body jackalope, and uh, this shrunken. You can hear the dryer sings a song when it's done. You can see the shrunken head apple sculpture. I actually did a video where I made one of those uh, shrunken heads. That shrunken head is still somewhere it's unpacked, but there's the, uh, the kit to make it. And I got my, uh, my Disney Funkos. Um, I one time went on this, 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 this like one day splurge where I bought uh, all these Funkos relating to the Disney parks specifically. Got the Haunted Mansion Funkos there. They had the Doom Buggy. I got the, uh, the Matterhorn uh, Yeti there, the Carousel. See that Country Bear lunchbox back there. Um, I really like, you know, stuff that has like the ride vehicles on it, stuff that like pertains directly to the park. I consider myself more of a fan of the Disney parks than I do of like Disney movies. So you can see Mickey there is on the uh, Space Mountain, it's on the Space Mountain uh, uh, roller coaster car. Back there you can see the, uh, the boat. The boat from uh, the Jungle Crew is one of my favorite rides. Some uh, some tiki birds from the tiki room. There's Captain Hook on the uh, Peter Pan ride vehicle. Goofy on uh, on Dumbo there. Mr. Toad, of course, with his crazy eyes. And uh, here's a collector's item. You won't see this again. Is the uh, the log from Splash Mountain with Brer Rabbit and uh, Brer Bear there. And this is just part of the collection here. I said we have some more snow globes in the bedroom, but these are our collection of, of things inside of things. And this, oh, this one here, I actually bought one that I already had, because I guess I have too many. But uh, bought a shark with a surfer in his mouth. And apparently we already had that one. We had this one um, that broke during moving. I replaced it with um, with one. I stopped back at the, uh, the fruit stand, the... Uh, you know, the fruit stands with the baby alligators when you're leaving Florida. I stopped and got, a, got another one from there. And then this is from uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. The whale inside the whale. There is the... Uh, got this at the Curiosities Expo. The, uh, the fish with legs there. And uh, this is Sunny from the Florida State Fair. Its mascot is a sun. And um, yeah, a lot of stray, stray moldoramas around the house. This here is pretty, pretty hilarious. It's uh, a, a desert snow globe, so it doesn't actually have any water in it. It's just sand. And then this is a, a, just a jar of beach. It's got shells, water, and sand. This is a genuine Florida beach. Up here is the Cronus was sent to me by uh, by Universal Studios for the opening of Epic Universe. Very excited about uh, the upcoming Epic Universe. I did notice this little bobblehead here. Someone mailed this to me, the uh, corn jerker. He's actually not a bobblehead. He bobbles at the waist. Again, more shelves that are 
slowly filling up there. I've got the uh, the two Funko Mothman there, the uh, original Mothman, and the Fallout Mothman. Got two different flavors of Krampus there, and uh, the big boy with the restaurant there is a is a lot of fun. Got the the rare white bees, see white bees, and a tiny white bat right there. Yeah, just some various, just fun items. And, uh, that is my, is a stuffed COVID <laughs> virus. There's the uh, Ben Stiller, is the Merman. Yeah, I see just cryptids everywhere. I'm obsessed with cryptids. Gotta have cryptids everywhere. I got that my grandmother gave this to me. She has a, a bar in her basement. And I noticed this uh, was Charlie, Charlie McCarthy, the famed uh, ventriloquist dummy. And uh, she told me I could have that. Um, Jen's looking for this. This alligator here has a monocule and a top hat. And Jen is still looking for his top hat. Apparently, it was it was packed separately. <laughs> but yeah, the Mothman there got uh, got uh, two different two different uh, cocaine cocaine bear uh, Funkos there. Got my uh, Gremlin Funkos, and of course. Cheddar Goblin. It was designed uh, designed by my friend uh, Shane Morton. I mentioned earlier in this video, he uh, made the uh, the mask downstairs, the devil mask. Um, he also worked on, created the uh, Cheddar Goblin for the movie Mandy, starring Nicolas Cage. So yeah, everything is still a work in progress. And like I said earlier, trying to get stuff to hang up. We're wanting to cover up uh, the walls with a lot of different pictures and uh, posters. Now this is not finished by any by any stretch of the imagination, but we'll take a peek into uh, Jen's office here, which is kind of the epicenter of the unpacking. Got all these uh, unpack uh, these still packed boxes in here that she's slowly been going through over the past couple months. Still uh, in the process of getting this all unboxed and uh, and hung up. Let's see here, yeah, it's starting to, starting to put her Funkos on the shelf. She's got the massive Star Wars Funko collection here. There she slowly unpacks. I got her this uh, this Darth Vader here. I think I got her that for last Valentine's Day, not this recent one, but it's actually one you can put on your head. And it makes all the different sounds. Yeah, I guess over here she's got, uh, this is her Indiana Jones collection and her uh, 1960s Batman collection there. And just a variety of stuff. You can see slowly, uh, slowly being unpacked. The uh, Batmobile there. She's got the R2-D2 garbage can with the moose head in it. Yeah, just boxes and boxes here of fun. All these funk. She's got a lot of Funkos. Don't tell her I don't tell her I told you. She's got a lot of Funkos. So as you can see, uh, it is still a work in progress. The home is still edging towards its final form. You know we're getting there. Um, you know Jen's been working really hard at, at getting uh, getting everything in place. You know while I've been doing a lot of traveling, so I'm very grateful for her that she's here and able to help me uh, help me in that way. And uh, it's just really nice. It's really nice uh, to be home, to, to to feel like I have a home. And I wanted to share a little story. It's a little bit personal, but um, when me and Jen first got here, we were first getting in. You know, we went to Walmart just to get essentials, things that we knew we needed around the house. And she asked me if I needed some shampoo, and. I bought this bottle of shampoo and as I had it in my hand and as I was looking at it, this full sized bottle of shampoo, I started I started to tear up. I started to get emotional for um, for over two years. I've been using travel sized shampoo bottles, the same kind but a much much smaller one. Um, 
you know, because I've been living out of my suitcase. Living out, I lived out of my suitcase. I would say I lived out of my suitcase for two years, but in reality it was longer than that. I have not unpacked my suitcase. Um, even when I was, uh, even when I was still married to my ex-wife, um, I had already quit unpacking. I quit um, putting my clothes in uh, my dresser drawers in between trips. It would just, I would just, when I washed my clothes, I would just put them back in the suitcase, live out of the suitcase. So I had been living out of a suitcase for probably three years, if not longer than that. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't remember. I could not remember the last time I held in my hand a full-size shampoo that belonged to no one but me. There was at one point, I had three small bottles of shampoo in rotation at the same time. I had one here in the guest bathroom. I had one at Jen's house in New York. And I had one in my mom's basement in Indiana. But now I have one big one and it's here in, uh, in North Carolina, in the mountains of North Carolina where I, uh, where I make my home. And um, I'm happy to be here. I'm still trying, honestly guys, I'm still trying to find this balance between work and home. I mean, I'm a traveler at heart. Um, I love to be out on the road. I love to see new things. I love going on adventures. But um, it also feels very nice to have like some regularity to be here to sleep in my bed, to not have to pack up and move out every few days. Um, you know, I slept today for 12 hours. I woke up, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I slept in, but I think sometimes, I just think I did maybe needed it. I had just um, been going so much and had been away from my own bed for so long. And of course, I don't want anyone out there to think I'm complaining. I've had, you know, accusations that I complain about it, but no, I, I don't complain because, you know, I've made a choice here. You know, I made a choice to be a traveler. Um, I love being a traveler. I love what I do. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel sorry for me. But, like, I am trying to share my experiences. And um, and part of the experience is just trying to, you know, just trying to figure out where that, uh, where, where that balance is. Where I can be, where I can be a traveler. Where I can, I can go to all these places and all these adventures. But still, still have a home. Still have, uh a place to to lay my head and I guess I'm lucky in that sense that I'm uh that I'm able to have uh both those things so as far as traveling goes um I think I'm gonna be here until uh the end of February I think I'm gonna stick around the area that doesn't mean no videos of course I'm going to uh still I'm still gonna try to put out a video every day if I don't I may you know, have a day or two where there's there's no upload, um, and that's okay. I'm trying to tell myself that's okay. I don't have like a firm rule on this channel that this is a daily channel. It has been a daily channel for uh, for the past two months, and before that, and you know, it, it go through phases of, of uh, long periods before I miss a video. But um, eh, no promises, but maybe we'll see. I'm gonna try to do you know video local videos. Um, trying to do videos, maybe maybe some more videos just around the house here. Um, we'll just see what works. We'll, we'll, we'll play it, uh, play it by ear and see how it goes. But I am planning on get, getting back on the road beginning of March. Got some big plans. Hopefully, if I don't die, we'll have some big plans, uh, that, that we will be, uh, we will be accomplishing. Uh, gonna be setting out on some fast-paced road trips, some intense road tripping, uh, through the month of March if everything goes according to plan. Um, and then, uh, then, then going from there. Um, I think you guys will be excited about some of the stuff. Who knows? I can never tell. <laughs> I can never tell what you guys like and what you guys won't like, but, uh, I do appreciate you watching. I do appreciate, uh, the continued, uh, support, uh, no matter what I do here on this channel. Um, again, thank you for watching and, and thank you for letting me, uh, letting me live this life of adventure. Um, it is, it is very appreciated. Um, of course, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Um, yeah, you have to show the pins. If you're interested in the pins, check out uh, the Etsy shop. 
Also, I'm still doing cameos, still having a lot of fun doing the cameos. And of course, uh, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.